In this video we're going to talk about how to use tree diagrams to generate sample spaces. This is an optional technique you can use that's sometimes helpful if your sample space isn't too large. In problems where you're going to be generating a very large sample space, like the dice problems we saw in the last video, I wouldn't recommend using a tree diagram, but for some smaller problems they can be useful. Let's look at an example now. Suppose you're taking a three question quiz. The first two questions are true false and the third question has four answer choices, A, B, C, and D. How many different ways can you guess on this quiz? We can use a tree diagram to generate the sample space of every different way you could guess on this quiz and we'll start doing that now. The first thing we need to do is consider how many different choices we can make for each question on the quiz. When we start, we haven't answered anything, but then there are two different options that we have. We can guess true or we can guess false. So this is everything we can do for question one. Now when we get to question two, there are two choices we can make again. We can either guess true or false. When we get to question three, things change a little bit because now there are four different choices we can make. A, B, C, or D. As you can see, this tree diagram has already gotten a little bit crowded. It's generally a good idea to have a lot of space when you're using tree diagrams to avoid things getting crowded like this. Now we'll talk about how we can use the tree diagram to get our sample space. What we need to do is follow each branch of the tree and that's going to tell us one way that we could guess. So if we follow the uppermost branch, we could guess true on the first, true on the second, and then we could guess A on the third question and that gives us our first possible way we could guess, which is true, true, and then to guess A. If we follow the second highest branch, we see, okay, well, we guess true, we would guess true again, and then we would guess B, and we would have true, true, B as another possible guess. Following the third most branch, we would see we guess true, guess true again, then guess C on the third, we follow the next branch, we see we would guess true, true again, and then D. We would follow through on every other branch on the tree like this, and that will generate the whole sample space for us. If we follow the other ones, we'll end up getting true, false, A, true, false, B, true, false, C, true, false, D. Now when we get to the second part, we have false, true, A, false, true, B. And this is our whole sample space. If we count everything up in here, we see that we have 16 ways of guessing, or 16 equally likely ways of guessing. Now we'll look at another example. Suppose Link's wardrobe has three tunics, red, blue, and green, and two pairs of boots, normal and iron. If one tunic and one pair of boots are selected at random, how many different outfits can possibly be made? And here we're assuming that an outfit consists of one tunic and one pair of boots. So at the start here, there are three choices we can make. We can choose red, blue, or green. Then after we've made the first choice, which is choosing a tunic, we have to choose boots. So we could either choose normal or iron at that point. And now if we wanted to generate our sample space, we would just follow each branch of the tree. So we could choose red and then normal. We could choose red and then iron. We could choose blue and normal. We could choose blue and iron. We could choose green and normal. Or we could choose green and iron. But here we see that we have six different outfits we can possibly make, or six different ways to choose outfits. 